tonight, all about vitamin K, a crash course, if you will, on what you need to understand about vitamin K. Now, vitamin K is unique in this regard, like many of the um, other vitamins. That, so we have vitamins that are classified in two different categories, basically fat-soluble and water-soluble. And vitamin K is in that fat-soluble category, along with vitamin A, vitamin D, and vitamin E. So when you're thinking in terms of vitamin K, it's fat soluble. Very, very important to understand that. Now, a lot of doctors will tell you from that perspective that when you're talking about fat soluble vitamins, not to take higher doses of them because there's a greater risk of toxicity because fat stores in the body. And that actually is not true at all with vitamin K. There's actually no known toxicity level of natural forms of vitamin K. That's again, vitamin K1 and vitamin K2, which we'll get into here in just a moment tonight. So let's talk about some of the functions of vitamin K so you can kind of understand what this vitamin does, why it's important in the body. So one of the biggest functions is in blood coagulation. What does that mean? That means it helps your blood to clot. If you don't have adequate vitamin K, your blood won't clot adequately and that can create some really serious side effects and problems. So vitamin K is necessary to help what's called your blood clotting cascade. In essence, again, helps your blood to clot. Vitamin K is also important in the mineralization of bone. So it helps to put minerals into your bone instead of in putting them in other places. So mineralization of bone, it's been shown to actually also help in not just with bone, but also with cartilage and with the dentin in the teeth. So it's important, not just for bone. A lot of people talk about vitamin K in the bone and actually in Japan, vitamin K, certain derivatives of vitamin K are actually used and approved as a drug to treat osteoporosis, but also helps with cartilage formation, also helps with dentin production. Now, one of the other functions of vitamin K is that it prevents, just like it helps to put minerals in your bone, it prevents mineralization of your soft tissue. What does that mean? Well, I'm going to put a picture up here on the screen for you and kind of give you an example of kind of a classic example of what I mean by this. So what you're looking at here, you're looking at two different images. One on the left side of the screen is a vitamin K sufficiency. And what you're seeing there is the, the lining of, or the inside or the lumen rather of a blood vessel. So if you're looking down a blood vessel, you can see when there's enough vitamin K, there's nice round blood vessel. But if you look at that picture on the right, there's a lot of debris and a lot of mineral deposits, if you will, being laid down in that blood vessel, creating a thickening effect of the blood vessel. So a lot of people with atherosclerosis, for example, we know now know that vitamin K helps to prevent calcium deposition in blood vessels. Well, that's an example of, of vitamin K's function in preventing mineralization of soft tissue. Your blood vessels are a form of soft tissue. So we don't want calcium deposits. We don't want uh, mineral deposits going into locations they don't belong, and your blood vessel is certainly one of those locations. So again, one of the functions of vitamin K is in the prevention of mineralization of your soft tissue. Now, there's another newly discovered, I say newly, in science it's new. Um, it takes 30 plus years for new scientific discoveries um, to really make it to mainstream knowledge. But in 1993, it was discovered that vitamin K was important for growth and growth regulation of cells. So it helps to regulate the growth of cells. In that regard, it has some anti-cancer and cancer controlling impacts. So we're going to be learning a lot more about this as the research unfolds, but it's been shown that vitamin K actually helps with a particular gene that helps to regulate the growth of cells and the differentiation of cells. We know the same thing is true of vitamin A and of vitamin D. Now we know that about vitamin K as well. So these are your primary functions of vitamin K. And so understanding this now will help you understand what some of the symptoms, why some of the symptoms and some of the diseases uh, with vitamin K actually happen. So let's kind of break some of those down. Remember I said earlier that the function of vitamin K is in blood coagulation? Well, the deficiency of vitamin K can manifest in a number of different ways. And one of those ways is through 
easy bleeding, right? So we can get easy bruising. So bumping up against a wall and you bruise very, very easy or your blood pulls underneath the skin, creating like a blood pool. Uh, you'll see this a lot in elderly people who are on blood thinning medications where they have big patches of red on their skin. That's blood pulling underneath the skin because they're blocking vitamin K with that medication. Nosebleeds. If you have spontaneous nosebleeding with no uh, with no ab absolute no reason or no trauma, like you didn't get punched in the face, your just nose just starts bleeding. That could potentially be a vitamin K deficiency. Bleeding of the gums can be a vitamin K deficiency. Blood in your urine, blood in your stool, black tarry stools. If your stools are coming out and they're really tarry and really black, that could be a sign as well of vitamin K deficiency. Some people end up in the hospital with internal hemorrhages and that, that's their diagnosis, right? That could be a vitamin K deficiency as well. So again, any of these things happening. Now, if you get a cut, um, if you get a cut, excessive bleeding also on the list. So if, you're, if your cut won't clot, in essence, if your blood just keeps running, this could be the potential for a vitamin K deficiency. Now I'm gonna stop there for just a minute because many of you take probably a lot of different types of supplements and you should be aware that there are a number of different supplements that will thin your blood. And if you're taking them, I don't want you to confuse them for a vitamin K deficiency. So what are some supplements that thin the blood? Simply put, fish oil is one of them. So if you're taking three or more grams of fish oil a day, that can thin your blood. Ginkgo, if you ever take ginkgo biloba, this is one that can thin the blood. Magnesium can thin your blood as well. Vitamin C can thin the blood. So you've got a lot of different nutrients. If you're taking higher doses or mega doses of those particular supplements and you're bleeding and you find yourself bleeding a little bit more prolonged, then before you jump to vitamin K, also think about what you're currently taking. Now, some of you may also be taking medications that thin the blood. And so in that regard, um, one of the most common one that gets prescribed is aspirin or salicylate. And this includes the supplement white willow bark. So if you're taking a natural version of aspirin, acetosalicylic acid, it can thin your blood as well. And, and so again, you gotta keep in mind if you're on those things, you don't want to just necessarily jump to a vitamin K deficiency in your thought, in, your, in the process of your thoughts. So, um, Keep that in mind. So these are all kind of a breakdown of if you do have easy bruising, if you are having your gums bleed or having blood in your stool or blood in your urine, like you, and you're taking these types of supplements, again, pay, pay close attention to that and, and um, don't just jump right to vitamin K. You could also have an overdose of something else. So just keep those things in mind. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.